Welcome back. It's now time for us to talk about that all-important issue of pension. What is it really all about? I know you've heard it almost all your life. But today we're going to do a bit of education and explain to you uh, from the experts' perspective what this is exactly and how you can be part of it, how it can be managed, what is the POVs of these PFAs and all of that. So all of that conversation, we put it together and we've had, we have in our studio right here Mr. Oguche Aguda, who is the Chief Executive Officer, Pension Fund Operators Association of Nigeria. Thank you so much for coming on the program. Thank you for having me. You know, a lot of people have questions when it comes to pension. <laughs> but let's start with what made the news as an explainer, as a starter, which has to do with some people who trended on social media that the PENCOM, Pension Commission had invested or loaned the federal government some 10 trillion naira. Well, Pencom came out and said, look, it's not true. We, this money is invested in securities and all of that. So for people who don't understand what all sides are saying, break it down. Yeah, I, I think the first thing is that uh, when it comes to pensions and retirement, people get a bit edgy. And, and that's normal because the future so emotional. And it's, it's important to stay within the facts, right? So 10 trillion loan to federal government is not true in, in that sense, right? So, so what happens is that monies are contributed every month with the pension fund administrators and they are invested. So part of the investment is federal government securities, whether it's uh, federal government bonds, federal government bills, or Sukuk um, bonds. And, and, and these are invested through exchanges, uh, the Nigerian Stock Exchange, the NGX, the FMDQ. And it's not as if somebody from the government comes to say, oh, I need money. These are um, securities invested by the pension funds, and they have tenured lifespan. It's transparent, and other people invest in those securities. The banks, insurance companies, even individuals actually invest in those securities. And world over, pension funds are typically the largest investment investors in government securities because they are regarded as the safest form of investments in local currency. Let me quickly follow up <coughs> on that. Okay. Uh, would the response by the PENCOM administrator be damage control if you consider that uh, about five months ago the House of Representatives had moved to recover what it called 10 trillion, in fact even more, it quoted more of loans <coughs> from the pension account to the federal government? Not necessarily damage control. I think it's really an issue of understanding, right? Um, Even on the part of the House of Reps? Yes, yes, yes definitely. And, and, and we've engaged them and we're continuing to engage in them. It's really a case of understanding. Um, and like I said, people get emotional when it comes to pensions. But I think the first thing is to even calm down to say, you know, as a country and as an investor, if you ask any investor anywhere in the world, What's your safest investment? It's government securities, whether it's in the US, whether it's in UK, Singapore, anywhere. Government securities in local currency are the safest investment. And somebody once said, if you invest in the government, the government is not going anywhere. A company can crash, an individual can die, but the um, government is not going anywhere. And this is a contractual investment with the government through exchanges managed by the debt management office, the DMO. And guess what? If the government defaults on its obligation on those bonds, Right? It affects too many other things. They can't borrow internationally, and their reputation goes down, they're downgraded. So the government has never defaulted on its obligation with local currency bonds. So it's the safest. Um, so I think it's an issue of understanding because pension funds must invest. Um, so, so where do they invest in? It's the instruments they invest in. So it's not a bilateral. Bilateral means two people. It's not one minister coming to say, oh, I want to invest, give me money. No. The, the pension funds don't even engage the government directly. It's through the debt management office and through the financial markets. Before we go to the basics, we're going to go back to the basics. That's fine. Uh, I want to explore further on this particular issue. So when they invest, I understand they invest in bills and bonds mm -hmm. because of stability yeah. uh, and security. Of course, uh, the returns are there. Um, these returns that come mm -hmm. in terms of interest, does it get to the... Uh, people or is a insurance company that actually get all of this money or a chunk of this money? How do you, how is the division? Yeah, how do you split it? Most definitely. So, so over the last um, five years, <clears throat> the pension fund assets has grown about twenty percent compound annual growth rate, meaning every year it's growing, and that growth, all the growth, goes back to the individual. So, if an individual is contributing. Um, monthly and your employer is contributing, you have a retirement savings account. It's your account, just like your bank account. 
No one owns it. So you're contributing X amount. And they invest that money. Um, it is pulled, it's invested. And when there is an interest, um, a dividend, it, it goes back to your account. It's unitized. So um, if, if a pension fund invests 10 billion, and that 10 billion makes 20%, 12 billion, 12 billion is shared amongst everyone. So the money goes back into um, your account. So all the growth that comes from the investment activities of pension fund goes back to the contributors. So that means that with the bullish run in the NGX this year, I should go and check out, I should be making some good money at it. Yes, you should. <laughs> yes, you okay, should. let's go back to the basics. Okay. The basics here are, how important is pension? Um, I, I think it's very important on so many levels, um, from an individual level and a corporate level in terms of from a country. So an individual is a peace of mind um, that when you do retire, you've got money to fall back on. So uh, now you're vibrant, um, you're able to work, you're able to hustle, right? But at some point in your 60s and your 70s, when you don't have that, what do you fall back on? It's the money you've invested in your 20s, your 30s, your 40s that has grown. And then you are able to, you don't need to beg anybody, borrow from anybody. So your dignity is preserved. That's number one. Number two, for the whole economy, Imagine if people retired in their 70s, swaths of them in Nigeria, a large population, 10 million people, 20 million people in their 70s, they don't have any way to fend for themselves. There'll be a drag on society. Society has to find money to fund them because theft and all of that. And even corruption, it helps in corruption because if you know that if you retire, there's a ton of money waiting for you that is consistent, transparent, you don't need to beg anyone. You know, you'll say, okay, I don't need to steal now because when I retire, there's going to be money. So there's a lot of things that pension does for the individual and the country as a whole. Um, back to your explanation about investment in uh, the pension fund. Mm -hmm. I wonder if you said anything about interest accruing back to the uh, pension account owner mm -hmm. upon investment. Yes. There's, a, there's an interest that should go to the um, yes. account owner. Now, let's talk about the pension account holder himself or herself. Yeah. How important is it for the pension account holder to track their investment account? I say this not just for private sector account holders, but for, for general, the, the sectors yeah. cutting across board. You know, a lot of us just keep working mm -hmm. year in, year out. <laughs> we don't check on our account. So educate us. What is the percentage of my contribution? What is the percentage of my, the contribution of Your my employer? employer? Mm -hmm. And if my employer is defaulting, who is supposed to ensure that my employer does not default? Yeah, so a very good question. And I think what we're doing is also part of the education, financial literacy. It's quite low in Nigeria. We need to do more to um, enlighten people and educate people. So um, every month, um, by the act which was passed in 2004 and, and by the way this year is 20 years of, of, of that act passed and that act I think is one of the most important pieces of legislation in Nigeria's economic history um, so every month the act states that you um, as an employee 8% is deducted from your salary and the uh, employer contributes 10% and everything goes into your account and that's on a monthly basis and that's the contribution so that, that contribution is taken by the pension fund administrator and invested so you will find, if you check your statement, that it's very transparent. There's a portion that says how much you've invested. There's a portion that shows how much has grown. So you can check it and to see uh, are your contributions coming in. Every month when your contributions come, you're meant to get a text message, an SMS from your, from your pension fund administrator. And PENCOM is up and doing its regulations, try to be transparent. But what I always tell people is your future is in your hands. You can't leave it with anyone. Right? It's not about the government, it's not about your employer, it is yours. So every month, if you get your alert, you check what it is. If you don't, you contact your pension fund administrator, the 19 of them, check on PENCOM's website, check on our website, PENOP's website. You contact them, um, you let them know, I haven't gotten this alert, or I don't understand this. So it's very important for people to engage with their pension fund administrator throughout their working life, not just at the end. Um, I want to see where are you investing in. Um, I want to see how my investment's growing. You know, just engage. And many of them actually have information sessions. I think it's really maybe apathy or lack of knowledge, but people should engage. It's, it's your future, it's in your hand. And one of the great things of the contributed pension scheme is that, you know, your career is in your hands. In the previous system, and what some people are agitating to go back to, in order for you to have a pension, our parents in those days, you have to have worked with someone for maybe 10 years, worked for five years, if you have a disciplinary issue, your pension goes. But in this case, it's not like that. It's your money 
invested in a private sector firm, you can decide to work for an organization and leave three months, your pension is still intact. You can decide to um, leave five years, ten years, your pension is still intact. You can be dismissed, you can be fired, sacked, your pension is still intact. So those are the um, good things about this contributory pension scheme. And it's very important for individuals to always query their accounts, check with their PFAs, and engage and be informed. You know, what is crossing my mind is when I see people are retired in civil service, yeah. the hell they literally go through. Pension is a right. Yeah. They are not coming to ask you for monies they didn't work for. Mm -hmm. Explain to us how that space works. I, I don't want to assume I know, <laughs> I, I have an yeah. understanding of what, yeah. but I want it to come from the expert. Why is different, uh, a different kettle of fish from the private people and the public sector? Yeah, I mean, that's a very pertinent question. Um, so like you said, the private sector workers, your money is deducted every month from your salary and your employer pays. When you retire, you know, the next month, you, you begin resuming your, your, receiving your payments, and we get that testimony all the time. Public sector is a bit different, it's probably federal government workers. So the Act states it's compulsory for federal government workers, private sector, and the FCT. For federal government workers, when you retire, um, there's a portion of your money, those that are retiring now or have retired um, in the prior years, there's a portion of your money which is called accrued rights, which is what the government owes you before 2004. So if you started working maybe in 2000 or 1980, you know, between 1980 and 2004, the government owes you a, a pension that it should have paid you. So what happens is that oftentimes that money is not ready. So until that money is ready before you can be paid, right? So what the government needs to do is to ensure that their own portion is paid, but the contributions in the civil servants account is actually there. And the, the, so the federal government owes them, but the federal government has tried to clear much of those backlogs. So those that have been cleared are paid and receiving their salaries, so their pensions, I beg your pardon. So those that are agitating and those, that, those accrued rights have not been paid, the government has been doing well, but we implore them to also clear that. That's number one. I think the second bit is the state government. Um, because pensions, uh, constitutionally, is, um, I, I think, in the concurrent act. So, um, the federal government cannot legislate on concurrent list. The federal government cannot legislate on that. So state governments will determine um, how they, they run their pensions. And many of them are not on this contributory pension scheme. So mm. um, the individuals now have to wait for the uh, governor to sign, for allocation to get there. So you see many state government workers, you know, they are not enjoying what uh, the private sector and most of the federal government employees enjoy. So I think that's where the issue is, is stems from. Uh, and, you know, there's a big conversation going on there. I don't even want to delve into that <laughs> we, now. If we not, we're that. going to lose sight of, you yeah. know, our objective for this. You have quite a number of questions. Some people want to know if I want to jackpot, mm -hmm. for instance, mm -hmm. and I have been an active employee of an organization, yes. how do I access all of my pension or maybe part of my pension? Some people want to know if, you know, a pension account holder dies, yes. how can the family members access their uh, you know, the pension fund. That is, if they know he had pension or she had pension. Okay. Yeah. You need to add that to the question. Yes. Uh, th yes. There's more, but so, so how maybe just know, how the next of kin knows that. You know, some people pension. don't tell people. You know, so yeah. all of that. Yeah. So, 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 yeah. From, from the from the jackpot instances, um, many people that have jackpot, and, and I think the thing about pensions, mm -hmm. you know, people get there unless they keep quiet. They won't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> the payments have been made, and just to say, about three trillion naira has been paid in benefits since the Pension Reform Act started. So about 500,000 people. So in many homes in Nigeria, they're getting alerts on a monthly basis in hundreds of thousands. People don't tell you. So some of your friends, you know, who have jackpot, you get alerts. No. Yes. So the, the alerts, you get alerts to say that money has been credited. But people that have retired, okay. they're actually getting cash. Okay. Credit okay. alerts. Okay. I was so wondering five. when he said he gets <laughs> 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 I was thinking it's, uh, yeah. yes. So about 500,000 homes, three trillion naira has been paid. So someone that has jackpot, right, meaning that he's resigned from his, hopefully he's resigned, because some people are working two jobs. Well, hopefully he's resigned from his job and he's gone abroad. Um, and maybe after one year, he remembers, oh, I've got a pension account that I've been contributing to. All he needs to do is to write, call, engage his pension fund administrator and say, I've resigned from my job. I haven't gotten another job in Nigeria four months. You know, the, the, the law says after four months, if you haven't gotten a job. And then the pension fund will now do his check to make sure that that claim is true. How long does resign. this take? It doesn't take long. Um, a month um, at most. 
probably even less, but just a, a month at most. So documentation, once your documentation is right, you see that you are, you're, um, you've lost your job or you resigned, so they will check with, with the firm, have you really resigned? Um, once they do all those checks, you can access 25% of, of your funds. I think the challenge... Sorry, hold on. Let's, let's take it in bits. Yes. Because, so <laughs> when you say 20, let's say you, you have, have 10, million. Five, 10 million in the account. Yes. And then you, you want to access this money. Mm -hmm. 25% is this in one payment yeah, or in one payment? Bring? In one payment. So it's not as if you want to access. So the act um, thought about people that lose their jobs and they don't have new jobs. So it's sort of an unemployment benefit, if, if you will. So you've lost your job, you're trying to look for a job. So at least something tied you through before you get a new job or you want to start a business. So 25% will be given to you in a lump sum once they are sure. That's 2.5 million. Yes, 2.5 million. In a lump sum, once they are sure that you you've stopped working for a bit and you haven't gotten another job, um, so again, people try and game the system, right? Oh, people, tr people try and game the system, and this is something um, that we, we have to be wary about in, in Nigeria. You know, um, so for those who don't know what gaming, the, I know what you mean by gaming, gaming the system. system. Yeah. What do you mean by gaming the system? Yeah, so maybe they haven't lost their jobs, maybe they haven't resigned, maybe um, as a matter of fact, we've got a case where people haven't died. And they put documents together to say they've died so that they want to access the money, right? Mm. So, you know, the, the pension fund administrators need to be um, up and doing and really check the documentation and, and pay sanctions them if they realize that they've paid someone they're not meant to pay. So, <clears throat> and that's why the industry is going through a data recapture to ensure that everyone has a unique identifier. Um, you cannot say you're somebody else or you cannot say you're somebody else. So unique identifier so that we are sure that we are paying the person who you're paying. So for, for those so, that... So when you say unique identifier, what, what do you mean? You yes. mean documentation? Yes, unique identifier in terms of you your... You can list them. Um, your, in, in, biometrics. your biometrics, biometrics, your eye, your fingerprints to be sure that, you know, you're not impersonating someone so that we are sure that we are paying who we are meant to pay. So besides the biometrics, what are that documents you need to present? Besides your letter of resignation, I guess, or yes. SAC letter? Yes, SAC letter, you know, account statements to show um, wh wh when last you received your, your pensions, right? Um, and, um, yeah, so docu biometrics is, is really that. So, so go, ahead, go ahead, go ahead. In those extreme cases where people game the system, you know, by way of death, how are they... How can pension administrators be more weary, you know, such that they can um, pick pick, pick out those people? Yeah, so, so I think the, the main thing is technology, which is what we're trying to do with the data recapture and, and ensure unique identifier in terms of biometrics. So um, once that is in place, it's easier to be able to track um, who is who. So technology, we're, we're working on technology. For, for debt benefits, you mentioned debt benefits. So anyone that is working in a formal system, whether it's private sector, public sector, should have a pension. So as a next of kin, you know that if you're working with the federal government or working with the private sector, because it's by law, if your company employs more than three people, they should have a pension account. Mm -hmm. So you know that your um, benefactor or your breadwinner should have a pension account. So if that person dies, I think the first thing is to know what's the, pers the PFA, the pension fund administrator. And again, there are a list of documents. Ideally, um, and again, this is something we need to happen. It's very important for people to have wills. If you have wills, it's easier. It makes it a lot easier because you've already stated how your money is meant to be shared when you die. So who takes the money of uh, persons who are deceased or dead that the family don't know have pensions? How does, who, who, who does that money go so? Yeah, that, so, so, so the money is kept. The money is continued to be invested. The money continues to grow until um, the next of kin comes about. I think uh, when you're registering for your pension, there should be okay. a portion of, of next of so kin. So the question may be, at what point will the pension PFAs get concerned that for, so this person came in at maybe at age 45, yeah. and now he's supposed to be at age 60, but we're not hearing anything. I don't know what they understand my, yeah, my, yeah. They're my dream. Yeah, so, so I think the thing is, your pensions are meant to come on a monthly mm. basis. So. Um, and the employer is responsible for that. Okay. Employers are responsible for that. So typically, when those kind of things happen, the HR departments of employers typically take charge okay. to say this is what I'm, what happens, you know, because even, so the act also specifies that everyone who is contributing to the pension must have um, insurance, mm. right? Um, a, a death insurance. So, and, and that's done by the company. So 
in addition to your pension benefits, the next of kin beneficiaries also have access to that insurance, which is um, will be three times your annual salary, right? So I always tell my, my wife that um, I'm more valuable in, in, in death, in, in era terms, than I'm alive, because three times your annual salary goes to your, to your next of kin um, by, by the act, statistically. So um, when you mentioned the 25% yes. and, you know, we calculated it and it's 2.5 million, I'm like, how much is 2.5 million? And that's the reason a lot of pension... Uh, Mm -hmm. Those who are in their productive years right now are saying, look, why can't I just access this money and spend it now? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. as time goes by, <laughs> it's losing it, it, its value because of yeah. infl inflation. What counsel do you offer such people who have that thinking? Yeah, so, um, but it's, it's also growing. So, so we, we need to look at that. So if, if we're honest with ourselves, if you take your pensions accounts and you see 10 million there, what you've probably contributed might be 4 million, 4.5 or 5 million, if you've been contributing for a while. So the, the pension fund has helped to grow it perhaps by 100% over the last um, 15 years of investments and probably even more. Mm. So, so the first thing is that it, it's grown. And the inflation doesn't just affect you alone, it affects everyone, right? You, you might say, I want to get it now. <clears throat> but the thing is, you know, um, it's going to be worse in the future when you can't work for now. Um, there are other sources of income, you know, and, and pensions is just one form of retirement planning. It's not the only. The challenge is in Nigeria, we've taken it as the only form. So there are other <laughs> things that you can do, even while you're working, to, to save, limit your expenses, um, or put voluntary contributions. That's one key thing that we're saying. So status really, the government says 8% from your salary. You, you can actually tell your employer, your HR, can you make it 10%? Can you do 2% voluntary? And that one you can access when you need it, uh, according to some, so, so some rules, you, you can access that. Okay, I understand we have just a minute. Uh, this person sent a question and said, why does PFAs find it difficult to fully pay retirees their pension whenever they want? In addition to that, what happens if someone wants to get at 25% and the PFAs are proving to be difficult? Because I've seen that instance. The person had to just, let me let it go. Yeah, so, so that question is a perception. I, I, I get that question a lot. And I, I, I'll ask that person, are you retired? Um, if you're not retired, you, ha you haven't checked the system. So if you say PFAs are not paying retirees, it's, it's not a factual statement. So I always say if a, a dog bites a man, it's news, right? So you might get one or two people that have not been paid for one reason or the other. But like I said, 500,000 Nigerians over the last 15 years have been paid 3 trillion naira. That's not to say one or two people might not have been paid, but you need to query whether it's documentation, whether it's someone trying to gain the system, whether it's a case of timing, right? So it's not true that retirees have not been paid. 3 trillion naira, and I'll keep saying that, has been paid to 500,000 Nigerians over the last number of years. So people are getting paid, and they are, they are not saying it. Right? When someone doesn't get paid, he shouts. But we try and resolve complaints um, from the PFAs and, and from PENCOM. So you can also whistleblow mm. to, to PENCOM. So the second part of the question, the, when they frustrate you, I just... Um, well, who do we talk to? I, I don't want to believe the frustration. So, I, no, no, I'm telling you what I have seen. seen okay. I'm not... I'm a journalist, <laughs> so trust me. You've done. Uh, okay, so, so you, you can whistleblow to, to PENCOM. Um, um, on, on their website, you know, you, you go, you send an email address, you call, so there, there's a whistleblowing program. Uh, and I think we're also trying to make it a bit more um, responsive um, where, where those issues are, where you think your PFA might be trying to frustrate you. But, but by and large, they are actually in the business of, of paying. I, I don't think that they're out to frustrate. Quite insightful, Mr. Oguche Aguda, Chief Executive Officer, Pension Fund Operators Association of Nigeria, PENOP. Thank you so much. It's quite enlightening to listen to you uh, give us all of this explanation. <laughs> Thank you for coming on the program. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And I will take a quick break now. When we come back, we're talking sports. Cecilia Morogwe will be joining us to talk about what Team Nigeria is doing in Ghana and all the medals that we won and what chances we have going forward. Join us again.